So we'll just jump in to today's two applications. Um, as usual, some of the applications may look crazy. Some of them may look simple on the surface, but sometimes I choose a specific application because of what we did in the software or a specific tool that's in the software that is super valuable. Um, so don't always judge apart by which one we choose because sometimes they're really creative and novel ideas. And that's the reason why I uh, choose those different specific applications. So today's part was uh, scanned with a handheld device, a lot like this one right here. Um, and you'll see here that this is a consumer product. Most people are familiar with these. You've seen them in the store. You've probably owned one maybe. Um, but this one is a very interesting model. And just in general, when you start to learn a product like Geomagic Design X and you do 3D modeling from scan data or just 3D modeling in general, if you're a CAD person, you kind of look at the world different, right? Um, I know a lot of engineers and people out in the market, they, um, once they learn how to do 3D modeling, they'll see parts like this in the store and you look at it like, how would I model that if I were going to recreate that? And uh, it just so happens that's what we're gonna cover today. We'll talk about how this part was modeled inside of Design X. So I'll go ahead and toggle over to Design X following the typical format that we do with this. All right, so let's keep on moving here. So you'll see that we do have our CAD model. And I'll toggle that off and turn the scan data on. So this is the scan data. For this part, and we'll go ahead and roll back and just take a look at how this part was modeled. Because again, if this is your first time, the format of this webinar is a little bit different than normal. Um, what we're going to do here is we take different projects that are completed and we go through them. And one benefit of Design X is the fact that we have the history. It's a history based modeler. And I know I repeat this every week, but it's really nice because you can take that model and you can roll back through the history and see how somebody approached that specific model and learn a lot from a specific project. So even just a project file is a very valuable training tool to see how somebody approached a, a different project here. So we'll go ahead and roll back and you'll see here that the first thing we did is we just roll forward and we went ahead and did a surface loft from this, from this surface area here. And I'll just do a, uh, a little example of how this was done because it's been a couple of weeks since I showed this, uh, this functionality here. Um, so we did a surface loft from this region here. We created a region on the surface of the part. It's very easy to create regions just selecting triangles and you can come over here to the region and hit insert or you can run auto segment on the entire project there's kind of two different schools of thought here one is auto segment the entire part and then make edits to the regions later and then other people sometimes tend to like to insert a region manually like we do here and um, you can just select an area of the mesh and then hit insert um, so that's how you can create regions. And the reason why we do them is they're kind of like a saved selection um, and you can reuse them multiple times. But with the loft wizard, you can come over to the loft wizard and you can click on that region. And you see here that if I just drag this out, this is the bounding box for the surface that's gonna drape over the, the top of that area. So this is the way this person was able to create this loft and you can dictate how many cross sections and you see here that we'll do five different cross sections. And then if I hit next, it goes ahead and creates a preview. I can dictate how many nodes of the spline. So if I just hit 20 there and then let it override and make it 20, and then what I can also do is come over to the deviation over in, in the accuracy analyzer. 
And I can drag the cross sections. I can duplicate the cross sections by holding um, control and I can make more of them. And you see here that we can go through and how fast this is to do. I'm able to quickly create a surface loft. And then when I'm done, I just hit the checkbox there. I'm going to cancel out here just so I don't mess up my history tree and turn on the mesh there. So that is what this person did is they went ahead and created that surface right here. So if we just roll forward, they created another surface loft up there. So I will say for, for a project like this, a loft, you'll notice that they went around half of it. And that's about what I would also do is you can say, I want to create a surface loft around half. If you tried to go all the way around, that tool isn't going to do a phenomenal job of fitting it going around. It's just not within the scope of how that tool's wheelhouse works there. Um, but you'll see here that they went ahead and fit that, and you'll see the approach they took here. And they went ahead and fit that region down there. And I'll just hide the mesh just to show. And we'll just saw, uh, keep keep moving along because what they're going to do is they're going to fit all of these and kind of make a spine down the middle. And then you'll see this 3D sketch right here and then two trims. So this method is what we've talked about in the past before, is they went ahead and let it fit, and then they used a 3D sketch of drawing curves on the surface, and then used that to trim back on both sides here. And then they went ahead and created a loft between the two. Um, so just to reiterate, we've talked about this, but um, this is a skill set um, that is really valuable uh, when you're doing lots of surface modeling inside of Design X. So if I just come in here and I create a 3D sketch and I come over to Spline, I can click points here, and then I can draw that a spline, and it's not perfect. I'm just kind of going quick here. Um, I can go in there and then I can use that as a surface trim, use uh, a 3D sketch or a 2D sketch for surface trimming. So if I come over here to trim surface, I select this as my tool entity. This is my target body. What side I want to keep right there. And I'm not going to keep it just for the history. And you see that we were able to create that 3D sketch. And so they they went ahead and trimmed it back to create a nice and smooth transition between the two. So if I roll forward, you'll see that they went ahead and did a sew. So now when you do a sew together, you're knitting this patch all together. So it's still individual faces, but it's going to have, um, a, um, you'll see here that it's one surface here in the tree so it's almost like it's grouped together but they are they act as one now right so now if we go forward we'll go forward a couple more steps here where they trimmed back the downside there and they did a loft between those two and they sew them together and then they did a surface extend down here they just went ahead and clicked on the edge and extended it out And then now we're gonna work on the side here. So they went ahead and they draped a surface along the edge and we will just click off of it and show it. There we go. So now we're gonna use that same sort of technique where we roll forward, we extend it out a little bit. We use 3D curves and do two rails down the side between the center spine and the side here. 
and we're going to do a trim. Now, if I hide this just so you can see, and then do a trim. So now we can come in and do uh, loft connectors there. So if we hide this guy, and they did a surface loft from this edge over and there. So here's another technique is they went ahead and did a loft, sew that together, and just leave that gap there, and then do a fill face on that gap. So for fill face, if I just roll back real quick, fill face is right here. You can select a boundary of components, right? And if I roll up to the edges here, curves or edges, I can select a boundary and I can say, hey, I want you to fit a CAD surface using those boundaries right there. And then it will create a single patch that fits in there and you can say merge result. That's all they did right there. It just said, I wanted to do a fill face. Most CAD softwares have some sort of option like that. And then now we'll go ahead and turn on that other surface. They went ahead and drew this all the way around and trimmed it and did a surface loft between those two. And you see here, merge it in and then do a fill face. So look at, we're making a lot of progress right here. And remember, you'll see here in a second, uh, while we fit this all the way across and we fit these all the way across, you can model half of this. So you'll see how we go about this here in the, the next few steps here. And where was this guy? So we'll roll forward. Oh, on the back side here. So what they're doing now is they're going to go down the back side of hit this and fit surfaces down the back. and fit those and then you'll see here that they use trims and we'll just turn this off so you can kind of see what we're doing here trim this back same technique right just walking all the way down it again and just worrying about trimming these together in a line and then eventually we're going to trim them together down the edge So you see, trim them down in the line, um, loft and sew it together. So now we have these right here, all the way down that are connected. And they went ahead and they did a trim down this, this edge here. And you see here, we drew some surface uh, a 3d sketch that we can then trim away the top and bottom so we'll just stop there for a second you see here that you could just draw the the 3d curves all the way down the side all the way down the side and now you can see loft 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 all the way down the side breaking it up into the separate components sew it together fill face fill face four times to make up all those so now we will go forward and we will <clears throat> do a surface loft for that vertical part right there extend it out and trim it in and then fill it between the two so you can see there we just applied the fillet and then now begins another phase 
So you can see here, I will um, just hide that last little piece. You can see here, I'll hide the mesh. This is where we're at. Now they're going to start the phase of trimming away the edges. So trimming away that top area. So we'll go ahead and turn these on. And just as a little quick uh, side note, if you click and drag down, 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 I'm clicking and holding and dragging. It's a shortcut in our software where you can hide and show and turn things on uh, faster and slower. So uh, it's hard to see because of the way um, GoToWebinar is operating today and not cooperating. But as I click on the eyeball and I swipe down over the other eyeballs, I can turn them on and off. So now if I hit that and trim, and then what they did is they used the center line of the project to trim. And then now we're mirroring across. Actually, they didn't use the center line. We offset and then trimmed. That way we can do surface loft blend across and so and then fill faces like we did before so you see where we're at we're getting really close here now we will take a couple steps forward remember we have that silhouetting option so uh, when i draw this sketch in the sketch setup We'll go into the mesh sketch setup. You see that we silhouette the whole thing. That way we're able to project that down to a flat plane and come in and I'll just edit this sketch and we draw that and mirror it across. So that silhouetting comes in very handy. And of course, use that to trim. So now we're on the final steps here. So we have just a little bit of a tweak on the side here to trim the wrapping around the edge, mirror that across, trim both of those together as one, in one trim. And then I forget what that one was. Oh. Trim the end up at the top and then thicken into a solid. So I'll turn the solids on, and there we go. We have a solid. So, really neat little workflow. It is just a example of what you can do. Oh, it looks like it's cooperating right now. So we'll keep on moving. Hopefully this stays this way. Maybe I learned something, a way to deal with it. I'll maximize it and minimize it, and then it will shrink to fit again. Um, so that was a really good tutorial on surface trimming. So the things that we learned in there are, yes, we did a lofted surface like normal, but then all of the surface trimming and then fill facing right that we went through is a really neat uh workflow to go through there